Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to take a quick review of this new camera here from Runcam. We looked at the Runcam split a couple of days ago and every time I think I finally got all of the Runcam cameras onto the channel then they bring out another one. Now recently we looked at another updated version of a Runcam camera and I'll put a link in the description here but this one is the updated version of one of my favourite Runcam cameras which was the original Eagle. Now the original Eagle video we went through all of the different specs and talked about what the Eagle is and why it works so well. And the Eagle 2 is building on that original camera but is a couple of things different and that's really what I want to focus on in this video. If you want to see the difference between the Eagle, the Swift, the Owl and the other cameras in the Runcam lineup then we have this video as well. Again I'll put a link here so you can go and watch it but this is where we compared all of these cameras in different light conditions and the way the cameras handle light is pretty much staying the same so you can still use this as a basis for comparison. Now when I did this original comparison video of these different cameras in all of these different light conditions one of the real stars of the test was the original Eagle and that was because it not only handled really bright light conditions its wide dynamic range setting meant that it handled deep shadow and bright parts of an image really really well so you didn't overexpose or underexpose any part of the image but because it has a real big sensitivity to light it will actually work really really well in very very low light conditions. So in this video what we're going to do let's take this guy out of the box I'll show you how it comes we'll talk about the specs and then I'll show you some footage of it in a couple of different situations and then I'll wrap up at the end. The really nice thing about this is Runcam have actually dropped the price of the Eagle 2 over the original Eagle. So at the moment on the website it's only £35.34 and, and this is a really really nice camera for that kind of money. It should be generally available about the 30th of June but you can start to pre-order it in different places now. Now we've been lucky, uh, Runcam sent us one of the first production units so we're actually reviewing a production unit not a pre-production unit and that's why it's in this lovely red anodized case but a little bit more on that in a moment. Let's talk about the specs of this little guy. It's very similar in specification to the original Eagle, 800 TVL lines, uh, field of view, you can choose between a couple of lenses, the 2.1 and the 2.5, it's uh, NTSC and PAL switchable in the on-screen display, you actually have the little joystick that comes with it that you can plug in the back like all of these run cams at the moment, but this newer version is using just the two connection joystick that all of the modern latest run cam cameras are using. The illumination, this is part of the reason why it's so fantastic in really low light conditions. It has 0 0.0001 lux at f1.2. I'll show you what that actually means. I've been out trying to get some footage in the back garden when the sun has set. We're in the middle of summer here in the UK so that means me standing out in the back garden about half past 11 at night well after the sun has set uh, looking rather suspicious with uh, cameras and things but hopefully no one's reporting me to the police. Super wide input range, anything from 5 to 36 volts will power this guy. Uh, one of the big changes between this thing and the previous model is the aluminium alloy. So this is now an alloy case, whereas the previous one was plastic. Now that does mean that it's a couple of grams heavier at 18 grams over the original one, but it does come with a different back as fitted as standard, but there is the smaller back that we've already looked at that I swapped out. Dimensions are about the same, field of view is about 130 degrees. So for those of you that are already using the Eagle or have already seen the specs, a lot of that will feel very familiar. The Eagle really shines when you actually put it through its paces. So here is some FPV footage recorded from the DVR inside my HD3s. Uh, this camera that I'm using here is actually a 16 by 9 ratio camera, so it is stretched in the goggles itself uh, but the DVR records it in 4.3 now I've widened it out to the aspect ratio as I could see it the DVR unfortunately in terms of the quality you lose a little bit of how beautiful the image is but hopefully you're getting an appreciation for how nice everything looks with the Eagle but then that's pretty standard a lot of the cameras that we've looked at from people like Runcam recently have had this kind of performance the Owl and the other cameras in the lineup all produce really nice pictures 
but it's when you start to put it through its paces in areas with lots of contrast. So here I'm in one of the local lanes and I'm walking around and moving the camera from the sky into the foliage. So I'm actually stood in the shadows and moving the camera between the two. And hopefully you can see a couple of things here. One, how quickly the camera is compensating for the changes in light and adjusting the amount of exposure to take care of that. And secondly, even when the camera is exposing into the sky, the amount of detail that we're still getting out of those shadows. And that's because the on-screen display allows you to turn on and turn off the wide dynamic range. So let me just show you how you do that. So in the box itself, you get the on-screen display cable and you pop that into the back where it says ground and OSD. And once you've got that plugged in, then by pressing enter, you can navigate the menu. Now the on-screen display menu on this Eagle 2 is a little bit smaller than some of the other run cam cameras that we've looked at recently. And that's because the Eagle 2 sadly doesn't have some of the features like the on-screen display voltage display that some of the others that we've looked at recently have. Now I really like that because I have two of the original Eagles. One of them is actually running in my trusty quadcopter that is actually really good as a test platform for new cameras because it's nice and open and easy to swap things out and the other one is actually being used in a plane and what I was hoping for in the Eagle 2 was the ability to connect up a couple of wires out of the back of the camera to the battery voltage and have that displayed in the bottom of the on-screen display which is a really nice way if you have a fixed wing model that doesn't have a flight controller to keep an eye on how happy the battery is. So the last thing I'll show you then is how this little guy performs in really low light. So again, out well after the sun has set here. This was actually shot at the summer equinox, so uh, I timed that really badly, but it meant that uh, it took me about an hour, an hour and a half after the sunset before it started to get really dark. The image from the goggles is the main panel here. In the lower right-hand corner, what I've done is used a traditional camera to try and capture what it looked like to the naked eye. And here we're looking at everything about 45 minutes after the sun set. So there's still a little bit of detail being able to be picked up by the naked eye. And as far as the eagle's concerned, it's giving a fantastic picture. It looks an awful lot brighter. The really impressive thing is going out into the garden an hour and a half later, where it's about as dark as it gets at the moment, with it being high summer here in the UK, and doing the same thing. Again, bottom right hand corner is actually what it looks like to the naked eye. And here in the top left hand corner, we have the eagle. And the eagle too handles the low light conditions in exactly the same way the original Eagle did. What it does is if it can get enough light in there, it continues to produce a color image. There's a little bit of noise in here, but you can still absolutely see all the details of the garden. And then when you turn it to the ground and it has very little light at all, it turns into a monochrome image, which again, still has noise in there, but the amount of light that it's using to do this is very, very small indeed. So this is the camera that you can use on the brightest of days, the most challenging exposure conditions, and also in twilight or even less light than that, and fly pretty safely. So in summary, what do I think? Well, I was a real fan of the original Eagle, so surprise, surprise, I really like the Eagle too. It's an even nicer picture than the Eagle. The original Eagle had some people who weren't happy about the amount of sharpening and very sharp edges. It's like almost over sharpened in the image. I personally never found that myself. I quite liked the way it looked, but this slightly cleaner image with a slightly less sharpening does look really good. It is cheaper than the Eagle, so thanks to Runcam for that. It means that I'll be able to get a couple more of these and put them in other places where I haven't managed to get Eagles yet. Also very welcome is they've lowered the FPV latency. The original Eagle that a lot of reviewers loved, including myself, was running at about 45, 46 milliseconds. This is running at about 10 milliseconds less. So that's all good news for those of you that like to fly fast, close to stuff. Still excellent in lower light. As we've just seen, it has that great capability of handling everything from really, really bright days down to almost no light at all. Great wide voltage range and still available in the 4.3 and also the 16.9 aspect ratio, which is what I 
tend to use the Eagles for. I'm a big fan of 16.9 for the panoramic view for some of the models that I have with the Fat Shark Attitude goggles, and the Eagle is a beautiful camera for that. Considerations, things to think about. That case is a little bit heavier than the previous version. Uh, once you replace the back, it's only a couple of grams, but interestingly, when you remove the back, you'll notice that the inside has been changed slightly. It's a single board construction, so make sure if you're gonna open the back, you just do it with two Phillips head screws that you're not doing it in a place that's full of dust. You don't wanna get anything in there on the sensor. That will spoil the effect. Again, sadly no on-screen display. I would have loved this to have the same on-screen display as things like the Swift does. That ability to show the battery voltage would have been very handy for fixed-wing pilots like myself. It would have been nice in the new version if there was an ability to change between a 4.3 and a 16.9 aspect ratio. It's set when you buy the camera, so if you later decide to change your goggles, then you're a bit stuck. A lot of the high definition goggles like the Fat Shark Transformers, the Attitudes, um, some of the head play stuff is that 16-9 aspect ratio and that's really nice but a lot of other goggles are that 4-3 more boxy aspect ratio. It would have been lovely to be able to change the camera settings depending on the kind of goggles you were using on the day. So the summary for this camera is very similar to the original Eagle. Very welcome is the reduction in price, the reduction in latency, and the changeover to an alloy housing. That two grams in weight isn't an awful lot to pay for security to make sure that the inside of the camera is nice and safe and there's a little bit more shielding around it too. I will be taking a look at the brand new OWL2 camera in a couple of weeks, which hopefully will finish this latest round of updates from Runcam on their range. So join me for that video in a couple of weeks. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists, so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.